Well, I've, I've only heard the news. Sorry. I've only heard the news 10 minutes ago. And um, I can't tell you how, how good a guy he was. He, um, forget football f for, for a minute. He, he, he was just a, a gorgeous soul. He, he was just a truly nice human being. Um, I, I went to Italy when I was 31 years old and he was, he was 20. And he, um, he was just fabulous to be around, Taylor. He was just a, such a fun-loving guy. He was, he was full of mischief. He was, he was such a warm individual and a fabulous player. But I don't, I don't want to talk about his footballing. I, I want to talk about him as a human being because I don't remember when I, when, when I hear his name, and I'm going to hear a lot of his name, correctly so, and people playing plaudits to him and, and saying magnificent things about his playing ability. Yeah, but what a human being. Above all that, what a human being. And um, my condolences go to his family and his wife. And, you know, they've been blessed that their past crossed. That their, the kids were blessed that had a dad like that. His wife was blessed that she was married to a man like that. What, what was he like to be around and, and the type of character that you've, you, you've touched on there? Just as, you know, the real, real... Character, I think, is the word, isn't it? He had such charisma. Yeah, that's a great word. He, um, I was 31, he was 20. He stand, he, my nickname was Charlie. I, I christened him Handsome. Huh. He, he, would, um, he would stand in front of the mirror, starkers, not a thing on, <laughs> and when he had hair, and he'd be this full length mirror in front of all the guys, and he would say, he would say, Charlie, Charlie, do you think I'm handsome? As he's brushing his hair, hair back like they had a lot of hair, he ended up not having a lot of hair, but he did have a lot of hair at the time. And I would say, handsome, you're an expletive, handsome. And he'd say, Charlie, you're right, I am effing handsome. <laughs> and he would do that on a regular basis. And a lot of the boys didn't really speak much English, and they would just shake their shake their heads and, and look at them and 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 laugh. He, he was such a warm individual. I can't. I can't really remember him. Yeah, he got upset when we lost. He got upset if someone caught him in a game. But I can't ever really remember him getting up really angry and being, you know, unbearable like we all can be when we get angry. He was just, he was just such a warm soul, such a caring soul. I, I am. Um, and it was another time when we were playing in Milan. I can't remember it was Inter or it was Milan in the winter. And Milan in the winter is also a lot of fog around. And we were staying in this complex where there was a big lake outside. So Trevor Francis and I came out for our walk. And we looked across the lake, another side of the lake. He's bending down with his tie off. He's got it in, in a lasso. And he's got some bread in his hand and he's trying to lasso a swan. Trying to encourage the swan to come towards him. And I said, let's go over there. So I, I, um, I ended up pushing him into the lake. And this is, a, this is you know, three hours before the game. Uh, and he had to swim to get out. I mean, it was proper, proper deep lake. And I really paid the price for that going forward for about the next 12 months because I'd come in from training, the legs cut off my trousers, the brand new pair of trousers I bought. One of my shoes would go missing. Um, find it in a bin somewhere covered in, in food. Um, I remember when I had a pair of lattice shoes, you know, they sort of woven shoes. Um, and I put them in one day and he had filled them with shaving foam. So as I put my foot into the shoe, all the shaving foam came out through the, the, the sort of lattice work of the shoes. He was just forever messing around. He just loved to laugh. And he was, he was such a pleasure to be around. I, I, there's very few people I can think of. And I know we're talking about someone who's, who's just died. And, you, you know, you, you, you all want to say nice things, but I, I, I'm hard pushed to, I bet I've not got on both my, both my hands, I couldn't tell you, nine other people that have impacted my life like he has. Oh. He's such a, not, not, not because he, he did anything for me in particular. You know, I'm, I was a senior pro then. Just witness him around other people, other individuals, and the impact he had on people. I think if you cross this path once, if you're in his company for, for 10, 15 minutes once, I think you remember him for the rest of your life. He was just, he was just a special, a special person.
a really, really special person. Yeah, it's such an impact on the field as well, and I know it is so lovely to hear about uh, these great memories of him, but the football fans will, will really be looking back now at you know the achievements and what he achieved from such a young age as well and look back at that great time when he played for Sampdoria with that incredible strike partnership with Roberto Mancini. Tell us a bit about about that. Well Roberto is quite a, a different individual. Roberto was um, he could fall out with himself most of the time when he was a young man and he did. Um, whereas Gianluca was you know he was, he was calmer and, and I'm not considerate. I'm not saying that, that, that I called him Henry. That, that Roberto was um, a bad guy, but he, he, he was a young man um, and had young man's traits where you know you get frustrated by things that really should have been able to part. Whereas Viali was someone who who you know just got on with it and saw the point other people's points of view first, and maybe his second. Um, as a partnership, so. <sighs> Roberto was a, a, a sort of number number ten you would call him today. You know, he liked to drop off, link up play, but also had a nine for a goal. Very cute, and clever player. Um, whereas Gianluca would play more through the middle. You know, take the big guys on, playing playing the tighter areas inside the box and and find space and and openings to get goals. And on top of that, he was an absolute workaholic. There was nothing about him as a footballer to dislike because he had technique. He had real athleticism. He'd go where he'd get hurt. Um, and, and just an all-round serious player and a proper team player. And his, his stats tell you that. His stats tell you that. But, you know, I, as I said at the beginning, I, I, yeah, I could talk about him as a football player, but right now my thoughts are, what a human being would. Rest in peace, Gianluca Vialli. He was such a good person in the football industry. Your soul rest in peace.